Hi, my name is Jamie Gellner, and I am a co-chair of the Veterans Affinity Group with Trevor Henry, who's our Assistant County Executive. Um, I work in the Strategic Planning Office in Albemarle County Public Schools, and we are really pleased to welcome all of our military families to our community um, within the schools and in Albemarle County. Um, this is going to be a really low-key evening. Um, it, the purpose of it really is to just extend our welcome and maybe put some faces to some names that you might have seen email addresses for. Um, and to let you know that if you have questions and you need help, that we are here for you. Um, and we also just want to share a few resources that are available to you um, and that you may benefit from in our community. Um, and so we have all of this all of the links and all of the information we're going to share with you tonight, we are going to email to you right after this meeting. So you don't need to take notes. Um, you can listen and ask questions at the end, pop them in the chat box, and our facilitator will get them to us at the end. And I'm going to turn it over to Trevor Henry. Thanks, Jamie. And thanks for those that, that uh, have signed up to attend. Um, I'm going to uh, actually turn it over to um, uh, Jeff Richardson, our county executive. Uh, and he's going to give a welcome, and then he's going to turn it over to uh, Dr. Matt Hawes. And we want to have a formal welcome uh, from the county executive and uh, our school superintendent, the two senior staff positions uh, within our, our organization and our government structure. And then I'll, I'll pick it back up and talk a little more about, uh, about today and, and get us rolling in with some content. So, Mr. Richardson, I'll, uh, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. Trevor, thank you very much. And for the military families who have an opportunity to be with us this evening, I would like to first thank you for taking time out of your very busy evening. I cannot imagine what you're trying to balance, what you're trying to uh, accomplish in your household. And the people who are on this call this evening are in awe. The fact that you are living in Albemarle County, you're serving our country, you're serving our community. And on behalf of Albemarle County government, I want to thank you for your service to our country. I have two elected officials with me this evening who I uh, serve with with Albemarle County, Supervisor, Supervisor Ann Malik and Supervisor Diantha McHugh, two of our local elected officials, long serving elected officials with Albemarle County government. And uh, they are with us this evening and I did want to take an opportunity to, to identify our elected officials. Uh, one of the things that I would share with you this evening is that as, local, as a local government employee, when we welcome new local government employees into our family to work with us side by side to serve our community, we talk to these employees in orientation about what it means to be in local government, what it means to be in public service. We, in the old days when we did this live, we would go around the room and I would ask the question, do you have prior public service? And oftentimes we would have a, a person in the room coming to work for us who was in the who had served the military. We oftentimes would have somebody either coming to us from federal, state, government, and at times cities or counties. We also had people from private sector and nonprofit. Our military people stood out in a number of ways, and they do stand out in our organization in a number of ways. They are their their work ethic, their commitment to public service. Their focus on mission-oriented service to making things better in our community and positively affecting the lives of our citizens. And so these are the things that I've seen uh, when we have worked beside and hired veterans uh, uh, from, from the military to come to work in local government. So it's an honor to be with you this evening. We oftentimes wonder when people come to us for the first time in local government, how they'll transition into local government if they have no our public service because as you know serving your community serving your community it takes sacrifice and it takes uh, serving others and putting others ahead of yourself and there's no one uh, that I know that knows more than that than our military than our military and the military in Albemarle County are very special thank you again for being here I hope you get something worthwhile out of this evening it's an honor to be with you now I'm going to turn it over to one of my closest colleagues Dr. Matt Haas, Superintendent of Albemarle County Schools. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. I really appreciate it. And I, I love working with Jeff. So uh, I think we work really well together. And, and uh, I think our local government and our schools are, are a great team. Um, I just want to, first of all, uh, introduce our board uh, uh, at-large representative, Jono Alcaro. 
he is here tonight somewhere on your screen. And uh, it's a big commitment for John O to make it out tonight. And it just uh, it's a, shows how much our board is, really supports uh, all of our uh, uh, new members to the community. John O, did you want to say anything real quick? Well, I, I'd just like to say is that it's a, uh, a personal honor for me to be here tonight. And uh, I, I thank everyone watching in for your service. And I just say welcome to our county. And thanks to all of you uh, who have joined us in this county. It'll be a better place for having you here. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, the school system, we are thrilled to uh, have you join us. Uh, have your families and your children join our school system. Uh, you're going to make a great addition. You probably already are uh, making a great addition to your school and, and our school system as well. Um, we, I, I think I speak for everyone. I certainly speak for myself when I, when I say thank you for your service to our country, uh, for keeping our community safe, uh, keeping my family safe over, over time. Um, and I want to tell you that in joining Albemarle County and becoming a resident here, whether you're going to be here for a short, short time or if this is where you land and stay, uh, I know you're going to be happy here. This is a great place to live. It's a very well-run community. There's lots of great recreational activities and scenic beauty. Um, I moved here in 2004 with my family and both of my children uh, started and um, one has finished school here now and, and the other one's a senior in high school and we have just loved uh, being part of this community. Uh, I've learned over time to place great trust in our Board of Supervisors and local government. They've done outstanding work to keep this community beautiful and, and a very family friendly place. So again, thank you for, um, for coming here and choosing to be here and uh, we're certainly here to serve you the way you have uh, served, served us. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Hawes. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Really appreciate you guys um, spending time to, to welcome tonight. I welcome um, uh, folks in tonight. Uh, again, my name is Trevor Henry. I'm the Assistant County Executive. I've been in my role since, um, since 2018. Um, I'm former Navy. Uh, it is, uh, today is the 245th birthday of the Navy. I won't make us saying happy birthday, but I just wanted to, to note that um, for any of the, anybody that happens to be in the Navy that's on this call. Uh, but uh, I served eight years on uh, active duty on submarines, uh, did a couple years in reserves, and then uh, there's a good Navy. Thank you, uh, Jacqueline. <laughs> uh, sir, um, served a couple years in the reserves, and then, um, you know, kind of just pursued my, my uh, civilian career. Uh, I've been down in this area since 2002, and with the county uh, since 2009. And it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege to be here. Jamie mentioned the Affinity Group. That is a, that is a group uh, that, is, that we started a year ago for veterans within our um, uh, county employee network. You know, and, and part of the, the, the output of that group is to do things like this. And Jamie, you know, uh, being Army, ex-Army, and I both talked about the, you know, uh, thinking about the military that are in this area and, and actually, this, this came up today. I was, um, I was uh, asked by a reporter about, about tonight and wanted to know more about it. And I said, it's really about just connecting to the military families that are out there. And I explained that, you know, most folks in the military get, get assigned to duty stations or bases or posts, depending on, you know, which branch you're in, uh, with other military. And so if you're living in Navy housing or you're living in a community that's, that's heavy Navy, you really... Um, you have that network of people that when a, when a spouse or a family member deploys, you have that support network that's built in. When you're, when you're active duty, but you're stationed in a beautiful place like Almore County, and as, as Matt said, hopefully you, you love it so much you want to retire here, um, you know, you're, you're uh, more isolated because the support network is a lot less. And so really the reason we're here tonight is to talk a little bit about you know, who we are on the local government side, the school side. Uh, Letty's going to talk about uh, a defense affairs committee, but it's, it's to make contact, uh, make uh, contact connections and provide you the resources that you need so that if, you know, if you need help, you know where to go 
And, and if you don't remember anything else, it's a, is that we, you know, we care about you and we want, to, want you to have success and we're here to do anything we can to help you in your experience while you're here in Almar County. Um, the agenda is, you know, like I said, a little bit about the county, a little bit about our schools, our military resources, and some time for q and I, I hope it's not death by PowerPoint. Uh, hopefully you, you'll get some good information and we'll have some good questions at the end. Which, uh, next slide, EJ. So if, if during the presentation you have questions, if you look at the bottom of your, your Zoom screen, you see an icon that says Q&A. Um, go ahead and, and, and I know folks are using the chat already, which is great, but go ahead and uh, click that Q&A and submit your question. You may think of something that I say or, or Jamie or Letty when, when she gets on that you wanna, you wanna get on for us to follow up with. We have, uh, we have speakers from the schools, uh, from other local government um, um, a, a, a activities, library. And so hopefully we have the ability to, to answer your question. And if we don't have it, you know, we will make sure we get back to you with it. So a little bit about Elmore County. Next slide, please. Um, this basically is what I'm gonna hit. I think we can roll on. Uh, thanks, thanks, EJ. So Elmore County is a uh, surprisingly big county, 726 square miles. The, the city of, of Charlottesville is in, the, in almost dead center of it, and it's only 10, 10 square miles in comparison to the county. The city has its own governance structure. Um, for those that are familiar with our area, you probably recognize what we refer to as the urban ring. You know, and if you're, if you're new to Elmore County, you may not really even know, like when you leave, um, or, you know, Elmore County area into Charlottesville, it's really hard to even, uh, uh, determined because it's all just just ur urban uh, area. Our, our urban ring or our development areas comprise 35 square miles throughout the county. The, the design of this was by, by intention. You know, planners back in the early 70s created a comprehensive plan which really specifies where the growth areas are. Um, and we have seven growth areas that, that are designated to, you know, to, 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 to contain 5% of the county, 95% um, of the county's designated rural areas. We have schools that are both, you know, in the urban area and the urban rings. We have schools that are very rural. Uh, next slide. <coughs> Excuse me. So our community, the, the, the setup of Almore County is, is somewhat of a dichotomy. It's both an urban county and a rural county. Jeff, when he, you know, came uh, to the county a few years ago from North Carolina and our other uh, deputy county executive said, you know, they've managed in rural counties and they've managed in, in cities or urban counties, but they've never managed both at the same time. And, and that's, that's kind of the uniqueness of Almore County. Uh, we have uh, approximately 110,000 people in the county. About half live in the rural area and the other half live in the, in the uh, urban area. Next slide. Our governance structure, um, uh, Ann Malik is the supervisor to the top left. Next to her is Diantha McHugh. Uh, our, governor, our, our governance structure uh, is a, a county executive form of government on the staff side. So in the, in the chain of command, the hierarchy, Jeff sits at the, at the apex, at the, at the on top of that uh, command structure, and he's responsible for the county employees and our county operations. We have six board members that, are, that represent uh, magisterial districts throughout the county. Um, they're, they're responsible for creating our policy, adopting our policy, um, you know, setting our tax rates, and being responsible for the revenue side of, of, uh, of, our, of our process. Um, we have a lot of information about the county, the county structure. We have a brand new website at www.albemarle.org. You know, if you need to contact your supervisor, if you need to contact a, a staff member in a certain area, that is your best um, your best source uh, of, of information to get to get connected. And then I would note that in the bottom left seated um, is Supervisor Donna Price. She's new this year to the board uh, and she's former uh, retired Navy captain. Next slide. What do we do? This is a busy slide. You know, we, we have the tradition, traditional government functions, our internal operations, uh, and then we have our external facing departments, uh, community development, so if you want to build a house, if you want to um, uh, buy property, if you want to uh, build an addition, there's, there's a permitting process. That is kind of the typical work of our community development department. They deal with zoning, 
zoning complaints, things like that. Of course, we have our public safety, uh, we have a police department, and then we have a fire rescue department that is a combined system of both volunteers and staffed um, services, social services, parks and rec. So kind of our traditional, um, tra traditional government services, we have two uh, county office building. One is downtown, actually in the, in the, the jurisdiction of Char Charlottesville, but it's a, um, the old Lane um, uh, High School, which is downtown uh, Charlottesville. Uh, that, is, that is kind of our main administrative building. And then we have a county office building on 5th Street, south of uh, I-64, that really is more of our, our public safety and, and health and human services. I will note, if you happen to be an Elmore County uh, resident, uh, we have early voting established at our 5th Street office, and it's open Monday through Friday, generally 8 to 5. A couple of the nights, uh, go, they go a little later. And then the last two Saturdays of the month, they will be open for um, early voting. Next slide. This is kind of what we, I'll say what we as local government don't do. We, uh, we don't own our roads. VDOT, the, the Virginia Department of Transportation, has, um, uh, has responsibility for, for the majority of the roads and sidewalks uh, in the county. Uh, we also rely on our partners at the city for the Charlottesville Area Transit for, uh, for, for bus and transit, along with Jaunt that really is more focused on the county. They reach all the way up into Greene County. Uh, we have a, a regional library system, which I'm going to talk about more in a minute. And then our water authorities um, are responsible for water, sewer, solid waste. And so, you know, it is, it is an aggregate of, of functions that make Elmore County run. You know, and sometimes it gets confusing on, you know, you, you think Elmore County Service Authority, well, they, they actually are a different entity, their, their own authority uh, within the county. But again, we, you know, our website can help navigate you to the right uh, folks if you have questions, and we'll have contacts at the end that can, can aid in this as well. Well, moving on to some more fun stuff. So that's all the government stuff. Quality of life, what to do. Um, if you're new to Elmore County, Highly, highly recommend that you visit our uh, Elmore, Charlottesville and Elmore Visitors Bureau. Um, they have a great website. It gets you connected to all the fun things that you would want to do in the county and in the city. Again, both, both rural activities and urban, hiking, biking, boating. We have wineries, breweries. That's an uh, industry that's just exploded in our area. Some of, the, some of the most fun things to do, I think, in the country, you can do right here uh, in Elmore County. Of course, we have a uh, great partner in UVA and, and things that they can do. I will note an asterisk here, you know, we are under the COVID world. So uh, I speak enthusiastically for, you know, things that we can do. There's still a lot of things that you can do, but you have to just do it in the, in the proper protocols that are defined by our state and local, um, uh, local authorities. I would just suggest that you make sure you check before you go so you understand the protocols. Again, great website. I would start there on, on things to do. Uh, next slide, EJ. Um, I mentioned we have a regional library service. We actually have three libraries in Elmore County, one in Crozet, one in Northside, <clears throat> right off of Rio Road, and then one in Scott, <clears throat> excuse me, Scottsville. And then we have a bookmobile that, that makes its rounds. The city <clears throat> has two, uh, two libraries, Central Gordon Avenue, and then there are libraries in Nelson, Green, and, Lu and uh, Louisa. It's a it is a, uh, again, a regional, uh, kind of a regional program. This is some information around kind of current state um, as far as what's open. Generally, it's by appointment uh, or drop off, um, but we have a, a Brittany Eversberg on, who's a circulation manager. She can help answer questions at the end. And then we have a virtual offering, which is, I think, getting a lot of use. Uh, and also our library sites, you know, have Wi-Fi extended, and there, there are also places where folks can go to get connected in case you're having uh, issues with, uh, with connection. And then um, I'm down to one slide and a, and a quick video, I promise. Our Parks and Recreation Department is, is kind of on the, you know, leading edge of our quality of life in the county. Um, we, we worked real hard to keep our parks open during COVID when, when all um, facilities were shutting down, we were able to keep you know, um, acres and acres of green space open and trails open with, with proper social distancing and proper masking. I think the feedback has been really positive in that it, it was a place where people could go and they could exercise and they could get back to nature. 
And so we have just some of the best parks in the state. <clears throat> Our parks website details them all out. Um, Joe Clark is, uh, is uh, one of our parks um, supervisors. He's on the call and can answer uh, further questions. Again, check, uh, check to make sure that you, um, you understand what's open or what's, what's not in our COVID state, but our natural resources are tremendous and I highly, highly encourage you to take advantage of them. And EJ, if you could queue up that video, I'll come right back and then we'll uh, turn it over to schools. Thank you. One of our three parks that has a swimming beach. This is a great place to come for fishing, boating, hiking. We have a, an accessible fishing pier here. We have one of the only dog parks in the surrounding area that actually has access to the water. We currently have 12 parks in operation. The time period between Labor Day and Memorial Day and there's no charge to, to use 4,100 acres of natural resource. This is one. I think we lost the volume there, EJ. Freddy Creek Park. It's 570 acres. We have about 14 miles of multi-use trails for mountain biking, hiking, running, and horseback riding. I love to see people in the park enjoying themselves. A family taking a walk. They got the dogs. They got the kids. They're just out enjoying themselves. Dardentown Park is the county's only athletic complex. We feel it has a lot to offer both kids and adults. 113 acres with three softball fields, one little league field, four multi-use fields, four tennis courts, and a cricket pitch. We feel Darden Town is a valuable asset to youth and adult organized sports. Almar County Parks Rec offers many classes and camps. Uh, the classes are reasonably priced and the uh, instructors are phenomenal. Parks Rec sponsors with the Almar County Middle Schools on our um, sports programs. We offer soccer, football, volleyball, basketball, new, new is cross country, and we do track. We have a track meet at Walton Middle School every year. We have about 300 kids. Uh, we've been doing it for about 20 years, and we just have a great time. The kids are really competitive, and it's a lot of fun. Something that's trending right now is volleyball. On Tuesday, Thursdays at Sutherland, we offer open volleyball, and it's really taken off, and they're really enjoying it. So it's just great that you know the people that live here in Albemarle County can see that this is one service that their tax dollars are going to that lots of people don't have access to in the counties that they live in. The data's out there. We've known it. I've joked with doctors about writing prescriptions. Write a prescription for parks. The best thing I can say about our parks is to get away for everyone, no matter the season. I'm out and enjoy the parks. All right, thanks, thanks, EJ. That video will be uh, linked in, uh, in the information that we send out. Uh, Joe Clark uh, will be on at the end. We also have a listing of all the um, uh, all of the local leagues, at least those that, that we that we typically work with through Parks and Rec. Uh, if if you have children that you want to connect into different sports, again, I would just caveat that there, there is a you know kind of the COVID restrictions at the state and the, and the local level. So this was filmed and released uh, prior to, to March. Uh, I, I, uh, we do have some of the best parks in the state, and uh, there's a lot of great activities out there today, and then, and then you know, uh, we'll continue in the future. Um, and so with that, I'm going to transition over to, uh, to Jamie. Jamie and our schools, she'll talk a little bit about schools. I can't thank you enough for being here and giving us your time. Please uh, fire up any questions that you have, and we'll, uh, we'll talk at the end. Thank you so much. Hey, it's Good to kind of see everybody um, virtually. Um, as Trevor said, I used to be in the Army. I did my eight years and I got out, but I'm from an Army family. My sister is a battalion commander down at Fort Leonard Wood. Um, my dad was in for about 30 years. So 
Um, one of the reasons I really wanted to link up and have this uh, webinar with Trevor is because I noticed a lot of our families were just connecting with each other online, either in Facebook groups or on Nextdoor and asking questions about schools that I really felt like I wish they would just ask someone in the schools or ask their principal. And I just wondered if um, maybe why that was. Maybe they didn't have the information or maybe you felt more comfortable talking with each other. But I just wanted to give you a couple of resources tonight to kind of point you in the right direction and let you know that um, you can always email me with a question that you're not getting an answer to um, and your school principals, your school board members, and all of your teachers really want you to be successful and welcome you in the community. So we do have a new website as well and I want to orient you to just a couple places that you might find useful. Um, at the top of the page, there's on the top left, the school board information. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on right now with the schools that I know people are interested in. And you can click on there and go to the live stream of the school board meetings if you want to watch. Um, I think at our last school board meeting last Thursday, we had over a thousand people watching. Um, if you don't have your school contact information, just by Googling your school name, you can also get it from that middle tab that says our schools. And if you haven't checked out our return to school site, it has all the information that we can provide around our stages of returning to school, um, how we're going to be safe when we return, um, what teachers will be asked to do, our mask policy that will require of students, um, and lots of other protocols that we've developed. So please check that out if you haven't already done that. Um, I think we can go to the next slide. So it was really hard to narrow down from the schools what you might be interested in. There's so much going on with the schools right now, so it might seem a little haphazard, but please ask some questions at the end if you have some more um, information that you would like to know. But in case you didn't know, this year we started a JROTC program at Monticello High School. It's the first year. It's virtual right now, but if your student attends any of our high schools, um, when we do open up, they'll be able to attend um, via shuttle buses. We'll have transportation to attend that program at Monticello. We also have four academies at the high school level um, that are also centered at each of the high schools and one's at center one, but any student can attend via shuttles. And I just wanted to make sure that people were aware of that in case um, they weren't. I do believe that high schools are having several communications about that this month as well. So KTech is one of our regional centers and it's running virtually right now. We have someone on the line that can answer questions about um, this, this center, but what I really wanted you to know is that they offer adult education and apprenticeship training that cover a range of technical education courses. Um, and KTEC's Adult Education and Apprenticeship Program is excited to announce that automotive service technology, automotive body, body repair, pharmacy technician, certified nurse aid, and dental assistance programs are all approved for Veterans Affairs benefits. One of the main ways that you um, can be helped through the schools is through our school counselors. That's another great person to go to at your schools. Um, we're really lucky in all of Morrill County to have a low um, student to counselor ratio, so they should be very quick to respond. When you're new to the area, they can help provide tours. They can inform you about how to continue academic services or plans, just uh, if you have like an IEP or if your student was labeled gifted and talented. Here we call um, it talent development program. They can orient your child to different student groups or link up with a peer buddy or maybe somebody else that's military. Um, counselors provide responsive services, checking in, monitoring, um, providing individual counseling. Um, Jamie, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you on a, a halt just for a second. Panelists, if you see questions coming up in the chat room, if you could hold off answering those until the end so that I can call them out so that all the attendees uh, can have the benefit of, of seeing and hearing your answers, that would be great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jamie.
you can go to the next slide. Um, and I, I want to add, we do have two counselors on the line and thank you so much for attending. So if you have questions that they might be able to answer, we've got um, a counselor from an elementary school and a secondary level counselor. Um, they also provide consultations with, with parents, consult with teachers, and they provide resources in the community. Um, if you have specific questions about our athletics and extracurricular activities, um, your athletics directors in your schools are probably the best bet. Um, and you do need to have a physical on file before they can participate. Next slide. This is really a resource slide. We can go to the next one. You're going to get this um, when you when we leave here today. Another place I just wanted to point out is that the VDOE website has a lot of information for military families. Dan Dunbar is our um, military liaison and our school liaison officer for Albemarle County Public Schools is Jamie Albers and there the email is right there. I think that you probably are aware of the interstate compact on educational opportunity for military children, but um, if you're not, this is a, the compact set, um, provides states to work together to provide a consistent set of policies that will make getting started in a new school, joining extracurricular activities and meeting graduation requirements as easy as possible for military children. So um, I wanted to give you some information about that basically, you know, law. Another question that we were anticipating is daycare opportunities in Albemarle because of the times that we're in. I'm sorry to say I don't have a lot of information about anything that would be free, but Military One Source does have a lot of information um, about fee assistance and how to get some support there. I'm not endorsing any of these businesses, but I have two young children myself that are six and four. Um, Little Explorers is out in the Crozet area. They started um, a K-1 program and a few um, after-school programs to support working parents. The ACAC and the YMCA have also started programs to support virtual schooling. Same with Bright Beginnings and Kinder Care. And there's several Kinder Cares in the Forest Lakes area where I know a lot of people are located. Um, I put the CDC information on there for you. I know you've probably already called them if you need this. And the, the thing that um, I pointed at the beginning <laughs> that led me to want to have a webinar to provide information is, you know, there is a Facebook group called Charlottesville Military Families and you all are the best at helping each other out. So network with each other, um, create your bubbles, um, see how you can support each other. Uh, as a working mom, I know it's really hard, um, and we're all we're all doing trying to take yes, one day at a time. <laughs> Next slide. And now I would love to um, introduce Letty Bien. She is a retired colonel from the Army, and she's a longtime community advocate. She is our new program coordinator of the Defense Affairs Committee, and I'll let her tell you a little bit more about herself. Here's Letty. Thank you, Jamie. So the Defense Affairs Committee of the Charlottesville Regional Chamber of Commerce, of course, welcomes all active duty, reserve force, and National Guard members and families to our great community. We also welcome and recognize the Department of Defense and the Department of the Army civilians and their families. Thank you all for taking time to learn about the location you now call home. Um, I am the new program manager for the Defense Affairs Committee, which we will refer to as the DAC. Um, and we are committed to ensuring that your time here in Central Virginia becomes your most rewarding assignment yet. Uh, I spent 30 years uh, in the Army and Army Reserve Force. Um, I am the Army Reserve Ambassador for the state of Virginia, and I'm now honored to take this position that is dedicated to helping our military community. Next slide, please. As Trevor mentioned earlier, we understand that there is no traditional base or post or station here, and that most of your engagement is with and on the local community. But just as a starting point to talk about who is here, uh, you see this on your screen. 
There is obviously Ravana Station, which is a U.S. Army facility and a major tenant of, and the major tenant units there are National Ground Intelligence Center, which we call NGIC, the Defense Intelligence Agency Field Support Activity, which we call DIA, and the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, NGIA. We also have the U.S. Army Judge Advocate General's Legal Center and School. They are co-located right next door to the University of Virginia's Law School. Inside their facility, they do have a small PX, which with your ID card you can use, and they also can give you updated and new ID cards. Again, there's a COVID um, protocol these days, and it requ both require appointments. We have Army, Navy, and Air Force ROTC at the University of Virginia. The U.S. Marines Corps also falls under that Navy ROTC. We have Army, U.S. Marine Corps, and Navy recruiting stations with active duty folks at their, those stations. Um, the Air Force has their recruiting station in Stanton, Virginia, which is about a 40-minute drive from here. And then we have various U.S. Army Reserve and Virginia National Guard elements throughout the Central Virginia area. Finally, I mentioned the Federal Executive Institute. Uh, that is not a Department of Defense or military organization. That comes under the Office of Personnel Management, but I put it there because people always ask about it. Um, it's a 14-acre campus of 29 in the city limits. And this is the U.S. government's executive and management development training center for governmental leaders. So SES level um, leaders from say Department of Agriculture or Department of Interior, and in some cases, the Department of Defense sends their senior leaders to this school as well. Next slide, please. The DAC office is located at the University of Virginia Foundation's Research Park, which is just off 29, also known as Seminole Trail, also known as Emmett. It is less than a mile south of the Ravana Station complex. At this site, we are establishing a reception and transition center for our local military. We invite you to come and see us. Right now, obviously, we have COVID-19 protocols, so it's appointment only and masks are in effect. The parking is free and plentiful. The research park is home to many of the defense contractor companies, as well as a Bill Burnett fitness facility and a coffee snack shop called the Nav Bar. And then once COVID is behind us, the Food of All Nations cafeteria that is out there will reopen. You see my contact information on this slide, my phone and my email. We recognize that military families require certain services that you would have at an installation. Please let us know where major gaps exist and this community will work to identify the resources required to hopefully satisfy that need. We want you to reach out to us with your concerns or issues or questions. And again, my email is there um, so you can see that. In addition, you will find a significant list of resources, benefits, and information at the Chambers DAC page. And um, that you'll go on the civilchamber.com and that you'll get that, uh, that link as well. Next slide. The Commonwealth of Virginia is committed to the military and the defense sector. There is a governor appointed secretary for veteran and defense affairs. The Virginia Department of Veterans Services connects veterans and military members and their families to federal and state benefits, quality care, some support activities, as well as recognition. This is a terrific resource and it has an office right here in Charlottesville. Also as part of that is the Virginia Veteran and Family Support Office, again, it's located at the same location. The Virginia Department of Military Affairs is a little misleading. This likely will have nothing to do with you except to the extent that you choose to engage in some way. This is the Commonwealth's reserve force, if you will. It consists of the Virginia National Guard, and then there's the Virginia Defense Force, which is a reserve force of the Virginia National Guard. So, but I put it there because it sometimes is confusing in the sense that people think it has something to do with active duty military, um, when it's really an agency that supports civil authorities here in Virginia. 
There are also over 40 regional veteran and military associated organizations. You know, we all know the familiar ones, American Legion, VFW, Marine Corps League, and Red Cross. And then there's the perhaps unknown ones such as Parade Rest, Team Red, White, and Blue, FCA, and MOA. All these organizations have programs, meetings, and events throughout the year to benefit you and your family, socially and professionally. You will find a list of all of these organizations with their contact information on the DAC page of the Chamber's website. You may be immediately interested in that Gratitude Seville site that's listed there. That lists all the local commercial companies that have discounts for the military and first responders. And that uh, also is on our website. The Chamber of Commerce has recently established a rising professionals group that will make connections with and for young professionals through business development, social and community engagement. It is open to members and non-member young professionals in their 20s to just about 40, maybe not even quite there. This is a terrific opportunity for this demographic, both single and married, to grow their professional and social circle relationships. Our site is a work in progress. We are updating it regularly. We will soon be adding local events that might be of interest to you and your family, specific information for spousal employment, education and medical information, among other things. I will end my presentation at this point to allow for more, for more time for questions and answers, and I stand at the ready to help in any way that I can. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Letty. All right, as you can see from the PowerPoint, we're moving into our Q&A section. And so if our panelists could turn on their videos, those who, who are gonna be speaking or who might find themselves speaking, but they didn't realize they were going to be speaking. Um, I'm gonna start with actually some questions that we got with the initial registration. And um, the, the first was, well, I'll, sh I'll push it to Jamie. Um, what resources are available for deployed personnel with working spouses during COVID virtual learning? Are there any other resources other than the ones that you noted in the PowerPoint that you would um, push out to, to the families tonight? If we're talking daycare, I noticed one of the question, questions in the chat was also around um, date nights. Um, I really, you know, I think I'll leave it up to some of the other panelists if they have any good ideas. I mean, I popped in what I could find. I think Military One Source is a good place to start looking at um, UVA. I've gotten some babysitters from UVA. Um, there's a site there I can add when we send it out. Um, I'm not sure, does anyone else have any that they wanna add? Um, you know, the many communities have the next door. Right. You know, like we have next door for where we live and there it's next door and then whatever your community is. And that's been, I found to be a really good resource. The other question I would, ask, I would ask is, so I could, I could look to answer or fill the problem is what resources for deployed personnel are needed? You know, what, what is, what's needed? Um, and if, we could get a little bit more clarity on that, then it's something we can attack. If we don't know, we don't know. Letty, that's a great point. And it was actually, a uh, Supervisor Malik put that question into her registration. She asked how we could, as county residents could extend part of it, how we could, as county residents could extend a better welcome to Rivanna Station service members. And I think that speaks to it. Uh, we can only, like you say, we can only answer the questions that, that are asked. Um, if, if we knew the answers, we would have already given them. So one of the things, uh, attendees and panelists as well, that you'll see going out tomorrow in the follow-up email is the veterans at albemarle.org um, email site that you can shoot questions to us. You can, of course, shoot questions to Letty as well. And um, we'll be gathering, we'll, we'll take the emails that you gave us tonight from, from your registration, and we'll start putting together an email list so that when we do start getting resources that we will be able to push that out to the, the group that, that registered tonight, whether they were able to come or not. 
All right, so Letty, since you're since you're have an open mic, I'll um, I'll push a few questions to you from the pre-registration. Can NGIC help replace military IDs? Um, I don't think NGIC can, but they they do do it at the JAG school. Um, you just have to make an appointment. They have that the DOD um, computer system there that's required um, in order to do to make ID cards. Okay, that's that's great information. And I'm sticking with you, Letty. Um, can they can we process passports locally with assistance? Can the military folks do that? Uh, I don't know that answer. Um, you know the passports. It depends. First of all, uh, if it's a generic everyday passport that we all have, I believe they have to go through the normal, you know, they'll go to the post office, fill it out and send it in. If it's an official passport from that you can get on, if you're doing, if you're doing um, missions or something like that, then an official passport has to go through their chain up. It goes up through the the DOD up to the higher levels, and we don't have the opportunity here to do official passports. That's There's three types of passports. There's the one all of us have, then there's an official one, which is maroon, and then there's a black one, which was the diplomatic passport. So we do not have the ability to do the dip or the diplomatic or the official passports. Would it be safe to say that Fort Belvoir is the closest place that could probably help them out physically? Um, you know, there are other bases that I think are closer or places that they could. I'll, I'll check into that and I will get back with you on that. Great. Thank you, Letty. All right. Um, and, and one more for you, Letty, that I think, I think at least in the pre-registration. In the past, the Fort Lee Commissary has come to Charlottesville. Um, is there, is there a way we can make that happen? I know during COVID it might not be a thing, but is that something that we can look into? You know, I saw that question too, and I spoke to Ron Maxwell, who is the on-site uh, person from Fort Belvoir. And he told me that they had, they had tried to do that once before and that it really was not successful. And it's not in their, it's not in their um, thought process at this point to do anything like that. Um, you know, we are now a, this is now a, an installation that doesn't have um, a commissary or a PX, although recall there's a small PX over at, at JX school. And anything that's in a PX, you can buy online. They have a PX, an AFI site that has whatever you can or want to get through the, through the, um, through that. I will say that the last time I was in a commissary at Fort McPherson, I believe. I looked at the pricing and then I came back here to Charlottesville and I went to Sam's Club and I went to um, Walmart and I went to Costco and I did not see, I did not find huge differences. Um, that said, maybe I wasn't looking at all the right things, um, but at this point, the powers that be at Ravana Station have no plans to bring in a uh, uh, anybody from another base to do this one day or whatever commissary thing that it, it was that they did. Okay, thank you, Letty. All right, we're gonna go into the chat room because we have several questions there and then we'll go into the Q&A room. Um, hey, Jay, yeah. hey, Jay, I'm sorry, this is Trevor. I just wanted to note in the comments, uh, when, when the question was asked about IDs, mm -hmm. uh, Anastation can also um, do that based on uh, some of the experience from, from the attendees. So just wanted to Oh, nice. Yes, it says at the security gate office. Thanks. And this is why we get together, folks. All right, so uh, Joe, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push this one to you. Can non-county residents use the parks and rec services? Also, go Army. I have to do yes. the full. Boo. No, don't boo. Don't boo. <laughs> yeah, yes, they can. Absolutely. All right, and, and I think right now all of the all the parks are 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 open for open for business. Yes, ma'am. Except they no are. swimming. Right, no swimming. No swimming. I myself am an avid paddleboarder. Just started, um, and get out on your paddle boards, folks. It's a great place to go. Um, we will be sending out some more information tonight. Oh. Um, oh, okay. 
Sorry, I'm reading as we go along. Java, apparently, um, Diantha, thank you so much. Java also has a preschool program called Shining Star Preschool. So something we'll also add to our list of resources that we'll send out tonight. And can I just add something? Java yes, also has a program during the day for adults. If you have a family member in your house that needs care during the day with because they have dementia or um, just need the support and you can't leave them alone, Java is a good place to contact. Okay, we'll put that on our resources as well. Thank you, Supervisor McKeel. I would like to chime in real quick about um, pickleball. Um, <laughs> It, the fastest growing sport in the country and I play and there is a Central Virginia Pickleball Association and we play a lot at PVCC and at Agna Hurt and um, at some of the local parks. So if anyone is interested in pickleball, it's, um, you just have to look up the Central Virginia Pickleball Association. I'll say, Colonel, that, that our pickleball league is, is a very vocal league. They're a very active league, and they are, they are looking for new recruits. What's a great game. That's right. Um, oh, Supervisor Malik, how do you know? NJIC apparently can also replace ID cards at the security gate. Mm -hmm. And... Um, livingfreetogether.org is also noted by one of the attendees as a good resources for those deployed or returning from deployment. So we'll put that onto our resource as well. It's on my website also. Is it? Okay, so we're, we've got that covered at the DAC website. Um, over, let's see, we still have some. We All right. Some Q and A. We do have some, heading over to the Q and A. Um, Mr. Allen asks, I don't own a kayak. Can you rent them? Mr. Clark. How you doing? Um, first off, thank you for your service and welcome to Almar County. Um, there's two parks where you can rent uh, kayaks and canoes. That's at Chris Lake and Walnut Creek Park. Uh, we have beautiful uh, swimming beaches there uh, open from Memorial Day to Labor Day. Thanks, Joe. All right, and, and Mr. Allen again, he said, may sound odd, but is there a sitting website to find people willing to say, this is for the date nights? And I think, Jamie, you were able to, you covered some of that with the UVA babysitters. Yeah, I think care.com next door, um, get your local high school students, whoever's willing to do during COVID. That's, that's what I've done recently. Um, the resources we added on a couple of those pages and I'll try to gather a few more to add. Um, Jamie, I will help you with that. Um, I, I think that it would be, uh, uh, I could help you add to that list of, of babysitters and I require that they have been through um, Red Cross training or whatever the, the, the different kind of training that they, that's required in case of an emergency. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of what the UVA, the resources there have too. They have some credentials and a lot of the daycares have um, date nights where you can sign up through them and oh, great. Pay, pay a fee even if you're not attending. And I want to say, I want to say either the Y, the Y or the ACAC does that as well. I believe ACAC. All right. So we have from Ms. Morris, is there a fitness center currently open for active duty members in the county? You mentioned the DAC reception center uh, was being established, but are there any current currently operating? I my understanding, Letty, is that the reception center is not a is not a fitness or is no. it? Okay. No, it's no, it's so, not. So if we're asking specifically about fitness center, um, Mr. Henry, I was shaking my head in the, the negative direction. I'm not aware of any. Uh, we have YMCA, ACAC. Those are all private, um, and people can you know can can sign up for. Letty, I'd probably put that on your list. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any any um, options for active duty military through 
uh, through those entities uh, for, for discounts or any other services that may be through UVA. So I uh, probably should take that as a look up. Roger that. Thanks. Thank you, Trevor, and thank you, Letty. All right, for the school board panelist, and I, I think Superintendent, I think we're gonna have to push this one to you. I think you're the, the last one standing as far as the, the school I can board. Probably, I can probably answer this one though. Okay, so I'll read it out loud. Unfortunately, COVID has caused us to do a lot of online activities, but I wondered if there are plans to keep online options available for events in the future, so non-COVID. I attended back, I, Attended back to school, uh, night school this year from Texas, and it was really nice not to miss any of it. Yeah, I think COVID, COVID's been a really interesting time in that, you know, clearly we can all identify all the negatives and the challenges, but there's a lot of opportunities too. I mean, we've all gotten so much better at technology and at Zoom and learning how to do um, some new things. And, you know, we've unfortunately had school board meetings virtually, but uh, We've got the live stream option available now, um, and all the schools are learning how to do things both ways. So I think absolutely to be more inclusive, um, including working parents and just um, recording events like we are tonight, we will continue to offer things online and hopefully in person at some point um, in the near future. Do you wanna add anything, Laura? You're out of school. I would just echo your comments. Um, I would say that I've, um, you know, I've been a school counselor at Monticello High School for 15 years. It's the only place I've ever worked. Um, I'm an army brat and uh, my dad was career military. So thank you all. Um, and I'll just say that it has definitely made me expand my toolbox. So there are, there are many things that I do now that I will absolutely continue to do when we return. Um, to in-person learning. So I'm looking forward to being able to um, continue Zooms with, with parents and guardians from afar um, and, and expand upon those options. The, the only thing I would add is that, especially for our high school students, um, there's a lot of interest in having a completely virtual high school uh, that um, when we're hearing from families about coming back to uh, brick and mortar school, it's about 30%, uh, 20, 25, 30% of our um, secondary families are really seem to be uh, enjoying having a virtual uh, program that their children can attend. So that's something I'm, I'm looking to do a lot more planning around moving forward. Uh, certainly would help also with our facilities because we, we use them to the maximum that we can use them in terms of numbers of students per facility. So anyway, just, it's great to see you, Laura. Haven't seen you in a long time. There, there was one other question that um, I answered in the chat, but just wanted to make sure people saw it. And that was somebody asked, what, what branch is the JROTC? And it will be Army. That's Thank correct. you very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're really proud because we're, we're starting that program. It's uh, actually the N NDCC, yes. National Defense Conservation Corps. And what, what that allows us to do is we yeah, are starting it with funding from the school system uh, initially until we build our numbers up uh, to the point where we can have a, a JRTC program. Uh, but it's really exciting because students from all over the county can attend it. They attend every other day. So they're able to retain their identity of their um, base high school. So if a Albemarle High School student wants to attend it from uh, at Monticello, then uh, they'll still be an Albemarle High School Patriot. They, they would be on that team or play in that band or, or do any of those things. And um, all of our academies are going to operate that way uh, moving forward. I think most of the academy programs are going to flesh out in 2023. All right, that's all. Really amazing information, I think, especially in such uncertain times and people are finding um, finding some routine with the virtual world. And so wondering how much of that will continue for those who are who are finding some 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 good news coming out of it. We've got uh, two more questions. Um, the first and then we're going to wrap it up because it is 710 and we started at about 610. So we want to keep it to an hour. 
Um, does the DMV still have the remote visit that comes to NGIC? Uh, Letty, do you know if that's a, if that's a thing? Um, it, it is a thing, and I don't know because of COVID when it's going to be rescheduled. Um, there's a number of, of service providers that we will look to get to NGIC, but the COVID seems to be the problem for right now. Um, one, I'd also just to go back to the fitness issue, if you go on that gratitude um, seville.com site, there are a handful of uh, fitness centers that do have discounts and check back regularly as I will be hounding the others to, to make discounts and add them to that list. So I know Fly Dog Yoga, which is owned by a veteran. He's a veteran owned business. There's a couple, there's a couple others. Um, Nine Round Fitness is a, a veteran owned business. And then there's, you'll see what else is on that Gratitude Seville um, website. Great, thank you. And I'll have, I'll direct folks to the, um, to the DAC site, to the Chamber of Commerce site for updates on, on when the DMV will be coming out to NGIC. Great, and the last one, what does the county need from military families? I think it's a great, a great uh, question to end on. Trevor, if you wanna, you and Jamie wanna take this one and, and wrap us up. That, that's a great question, I appreciate it. And, and I would say, it's um, it's what Letty and, and EJ what you asked. It's help uh, help communicate with uh, with schools, with local government on and on what you you know what you need uh, as military residents in our area to make sure that we know how we can resource up and we can communicate in a way to to serve your needs. Especially you know if, if it's a condition where uh, a spouse is deployed and and you know you're you're acting in, in kind of as a single parent with kids in school. So so the, the, you know, the input or the questions that you have help us become better at what we do. Uh, so Jamie, Letty, do you have any, th th any thoughts on that? Um, no, I, I'm sorry, I had like a little ditzy moment of it's getting late at night and my kids are knocking on the door behind me. Um, <laughs> I, I think that the military families that I've worked with, um, I echo, I think what Jeff said at the beginning, I think, we, you are resilient. Um, you're already volunteering. You're already helping out your schools. Continue to do that. And please just let us, um, let us know how we can help you. Um, and just know that, you know, we appreciate you. Um, and that even though you, you're a, may feel like you're a small voice in this community, we have military families at every single one of our schools. Um, and it's, it's important for us to hear from you. I would add that though the military in numbers seems small here, there is a giant cadre of retired military that live here and they are all willing to help. They just never know what to do and how to do it. Um, and we can reach out to them, but it is, when I moved here nine years ago, everybody told me that it was not a military friendly place. And I found out real soon that that was not the case at all. It was a very military friendly place to live, work, play, school, et cetera. So yes, keep doing what you're doing. Two, please do not, you know, we always, when we were in the military, we always talked about what we would do when we got to the real world. And we are all now in the real world um, uh, for that lingo but we're not scary, we're not intimidating, and if you need help of any sort that you can't satisfy through your chain of command, please, by all intentions, reach out to us. Um, we will be doing some transition opportunities as well. There's a lot of defense contractors here that um, are looking for people who come out of the military, particularly with, with STEM-related um, backgrounds, and if you're at NGIC or DIA or something like that, you likely likely have those kind of backgrounds and we can connect you with those folks. So, you know, use us. We have a lot of, I, I, we really have a lot of resources. It's just communicating to you that they're there and we just would hope you would reach out. Thank you. 
Great. Thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. Panelists for making time out of the end of your long day. Attendees for making time at the end of your long day. Um, like Laura, I'm a military brat and am always grateful for when folks reach out and say, hey, what, what do you need? We're here for you. So please, it's, it's with every sincerity that our panelists have spoken, our supervisors and our school board and our county staff, please reach out to us. You'll be getting a follow-up email from veterans at allmall.org tomorrow with all the information and resources that were in the PowerPoint tonight. Again, reach out to us and let us know how we can help. Welcome to the county and thank you again for your service. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, EJ. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for organizing this. Bye. Thank you all. Have a good, good night. night. Good night. Thank you so much to all the panelists for coming.